Hi there. So we're back again with one more um, video by a videographer, uh, Jason Gear from the OTLE. Today we're going to be looking at objective number six, which is a front steer axle. You've all seen this one on lab. So here is our basically our front end right here. Um, this one you'll note we do not have a dual can. We have one single can, a service can on this side. This is a type 24. You're familiar with the type, so the type 24 is 24 square inches uh, of the uh, diaphragm on the inside. We'll talk a little bit about the hammer again later. Uh, brake drum, and of course on the inside we're working on the, the brake shoes. One thing we're going to be doing right here on this one is going to be the kingpin. We're going to be removing, partly removing the kingpin, taking some measurements. So we're going to uh, take a break and we're going to reconvene uh, over at the other trainer which we have already tore apart. Okay, welcome back. So you can see that we are working with our number 1A and number 1B axle trainer. So that means that I have one uh, adjusting slash lock nut. We'll get to that a little bit later. You can see on this side here, I have removed the, the uh, brake drum, the brake shoes, the brake hub, the brake cam, which is sitting over the back side, and also the top and bottom uh, caps, which are on the um, over and above the uh, kingpin. So we're going to do a couple of measurements now. So this would be number nine on your worksheet, your lab objective sheet. We are going to <coughs> measure the upper bushing inside diameter, the outside bushing of the upper kingpin, the lower bushing inside diameter, and the lower kingpin outside diameter. And we're going to be using the one to two inch micrometer and the snap gauges. All right, so on the kingpin, I have taken out one of the draw keys. All right, you know what a draw key is, okay? Remember, we have a flat side which aligns up with a notch on the kingpin. So I still have one draw key to take out, so I'll pop that one out, and then we'll do some measuring. So I've got at least loosened up. I'll pop this one out. And I'm going to kind of hold my hand on the bottom because we do not want this thing, as you know, to fall out. So I'll just pull this one out. Maybe we'll pull them out. All right, we need a little persuasion. So we'll just get a punch. Just gently. Tap him out. All right, so we'll put him together so we don't lose our parts. So I'm gonna gently tap this kingpin down. So about that point right there. So if Jason, if you could get right on the inside. So you can see this yellow right here. This is my upper bushing. So I'm gonna take my snap gauge and we will get our upper bushing. Snap it together, lock him in. All right, we'll see if we can do this. We're gonna set our snap gauge up here and we'll get a reading with our micrometer. Again, this is a one to two inch mic. Lock them in place. And now we'll have Jason get focused. So we can read our measurement. And then this is a vernier scale, so I'll tell you the number. So I'm looking at this scale right here. Your fourth number is going to be a two. This one right here by my fingertip. Okay, so let's do a measurement on the bottom of our, so this is our upper kingpin bushing. We're now gonna do the lower kingpin itself. Get him lined up. Right about there. So again, we'll have Jason zoom in on the reading. So this will be the lower kingpin outside diameter. And I can kind of look at the top on our vernier scale. 
and I can see that this time it's actually number one that lines up. So your fourth number will be a one. So zero point number, number, number one. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're gonna pop this up. on the bottom side just to make it just a little bit easier. All right, there'll be plenty to get a measurement. So, same thing, I'm going to get a measurement of the lower kingpin bushing. Set him up in here again. Go down my micrometer. We'll lock him in. We'll have Jason focus on the numbers again for us. And on our vernier scale. I'm looking at this one right here. So your fourth number on your vernier is going to be eight. Okay. So let's do our last measurement here. This will be the upper outside diameter of the kingpin. We'll have Jason focus one more time. Okay, on our, all right, Jason just repositioning my hands. <laughs> okay, on our vernier scale, I'm looking at this one right here, your last number your fourth number in your reading will be a four. Okay. So that's our readings for a kingpin. So let's pop this puppy back in. Now, if you recall, we have an upper and a lower draw key. The, they are two different lengths. All right. The upper draw key is always a shorter one. The lower one is a longer draw key. All right, so we will pop these, take these nuts off of here. One thing to remember, guys, is if you are working on kingpins, we have our upper steering knuckle, then we typically have some shims, we have our axle, we have a, a bearing, we have more shims than we have our lower steering knuckle. So we have a lot of things we have to get lined up. So just be very, very careful when you're removing and installing these. Uh, if you have to take measurements, this is a better way to do it rather than taking the kingpin all the way out. If you take the kingpin all the way out, do not touch anything because if one of those things gets out of alignment, you got a problem, all right? So let's just tap this back down. About there, I think. We'll see if our draw key is going to go in. All right, so we twisted just a smidgen. So I'm just going to tap this one in from this side, and that will, there we go, rotates it into position. One thing to note, Jason, if you could, can you get a, a shot a very tight on the top? On this one, it has the word top, which is sitting right by my finger. And that's the manufacturer wants this 
obviously this end to be the top part. So when, if we have to take it out and go back together, then we put it back in the same position. I've mentioned in class, I've never had to replace a uh, kingpin. I have had to replace the bushings, which is a good thing, all right? Bushings are pretty straightforward to replace. All right, so let's get a, our other kingpin in, or our other draw key. I'm gonna do with my knife, there we go. So let's just get these on here. Actually have to rotate our steering wheel. In our next, next lecture, we're actually gonna talk about this. This is our steering stop. All right, we'll talk about him in our next lecture. So we'll just gently tap him in, there we go. Also realize that in the real world, you would be torquing down these nuts, okay? This is about a 7 16 inch bolt, all right? And it's a grade eight, so you guys can look up a generic spec to find out what we would torque those down to. All right, so let's do a couple more measurements. Let's look at our worksheet. So I'm looking at number 11. So we're going to be doing a dial indicator. We're going to be using some kingpin play. So dial indicator, magnetic base. Now hopefully we can get all this set up. We've got a lot of stuff going on here. Okay, so I'm going to have Jason zoom in. So the first one we're going to do is going to be basically the, the, the play of our bushings. So what we'll do is I'm going to put my hand on the end of the spindle, I'm going to push down, and I'm going to zero my dial indicator, then I'm going to pull up. What I'm pulling up, Jason's going to zoom in on the reading. So if I push down, I'll go to zero, and then you guys can get the reading. So now we'll just push up, down to zero, back up, we'll hold it there. Okay, so we should be at that reading. The next one will be the same thing, but on the bottom side. I hope I can do this without dropping our dial indicator which is never a good thing to do. All right, let's read size. Is that enough light there, Jason? Yep. All right, so I push down. I'm going to zero. Now I'm going to pull up. And that's basically the clearance on the bottom kingpin bushing. Back to zero. Push up. All right, our fourth reading is basically going to be vertical movement. Let's turn this around. Let's configuration this right place. All right, so use a bar on this one. So I'm going to zero it right here, and I'm going to lift straight up on the kingpin. This is not going to quite work. We're going to pull that out just a little. All right, that was tool zeroed. So there we go right there. You can read that measurement from zero. Okay, that one is the straight up and down vertical movement of the steering knuckle. Okay, 
Let's get rid of this thing. All right, so if I flip the page, I'm now going to go on to number 12. So as you can see, I've taken off the uh, brake can. I've also taken off the slack adjuster from the back of the S cam. So now we're going to pull the S cam out and we'll do a couple measurements here. Now, one thing we need to note is that this measurement is going to be in metric. So this is a 25 to 50 millimeter. So the first number we're going to start with is 25. All right, so let's get out. We're going to use the same snap gauge. So working through our worksheet, the first one we want to do is the inside diameter of the inner cam bushing. So this is the outer, inner, uh, outer cam bushing because it's closest to the wheel end. This is the inner because it's closest to the center of the vehicle. So we're going to do the inner one first. Snaps into place. Take him out. And now we'll do our measurement with our metric. And you guys know I love metric, so this is like really cool stuff. I think you all guys like metric too, right? I know a couple of you do. So we'll take this here, lock it in place, and we'll have Jason zoom in. So remember that along the top, 25 to 30, so I have 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Along the bottom are half millimeter. You put it where you need it, there we go. So 25, 25 and a half, 26, 26 and a half, 27, 27 and a half, et cetera, et cetera. Then I need to add on these right here. So I'll help with the first reading. So I have 35, 36, 37, 37 and a half, plus another 20. All right, so I have 20, I have 37.5 plus 20, which would be 37.7 millimeters. Okay, well that's your first reading. There's your freebie. All right, so let's, the next reading that we need off our worksheet is the diameter of the S camshaft. So we're going to do this a little bit different. We're going to see if we can put that in. Yeah, it's not going to quite work. So I'm just going to put this in here. I'm going to be measuring this portion right here. Okay. So actually, we'll just put it right here. Yeah, that'll work. So take a micrometer. We'll lock him in place. And we'll have Jason focus in on our number. Remember that your reading for your camshaft must be smaller than the reading for the bushing. The bushing always has to be bigger. If, it, if the camshaft is bigger, there's no physical way of getting that in the bushing. All right, we good? Okay, next one we're gonna do on our worksheet is the inside diameter of the outer S-cam bushing. So we'll sit them down. So that's going to be this bushing right here. So we set him in. Snap. You hear the snap? That's why it's called a snap gauge. Also called a telescoping gauge. Take him out. Here. I have Jason focus in on the reading, and he'll just adjust my hands to where they need to be. Okay. All right, so now we'll go ahead. And we're gonna measure this area right here. So unlock him. All right, 
So there's all our measurements. All right, so our next measurement, with my worksheet, <coughs> is number 13. We're going to measure the radial free play and the axial end play. So I do need to reinstall my camshaft. And I'm going to put my slack adjuster on the other end. So he'll go on like so. We're not going to put our brake can on yet. We'll just let him hang down. And we'll put on our shims and washer into place. When you're taking these apart, guys, make sure that you know which order you took all the stuff apart. And we we'll use our snap ring pliers to get our, maybe we'll use our snap ring pliers. Get that in place and make sure it's seated. All right, so now we're going to measure the end play and also the up and down movement. All right, so the first one is going to be our radial free play. Got a dial indicator. Got a nice mounting base for this puppy. All right, so this is our radial free play. So I'm gonna hold down and we'll zero and then we're just gonna lift straight up. So from zero, oops, dang it. Gonna do this without rotating. Put that right at the very bottom, there we go. So there's zero. Easier said than done. Let's try that again. Straight up, straight down, straight up. Okay? Next one is our in play. So that's basically back and forward. I'm going to take this around so Jason can see it. So we go all the way in, and we zero, and then we push out, and we got quite a bit of movement there, way more than our spec. Back to zero, slowly out. All right, so we've got over 70 thousands of play right there. Our worksheet, number 13, tells you exactly what you need for specs. Radial free play, so that's our up and down, 30 thousandths, and then in the real fine print for our end play, between 5 and 45. All right, so you have those measurements. Okay, so let's take another break, and we're going to start assembling our hub. All right, welcome back. So you can see that uh, we're actually on the other side of the trainer, still the, uh, the one uh, knock nut. With the brake shoes back on, I've got my air cam back on, my caps are on the top and bottom of my kingpin, my dust shield's back where it needs to be. So now we're going to install the hub and then we'll put on our brake, shoe, our brake drum, okay? So first thing to do is just double <coughs> check that our nut does go on freely. Looking good, oop, okay. All right, nuts are good. So I cheated just a little bit, I already knew that was going to happen, so I went to Bruce and I got my, here, my thread chaser, okay? This is a good investment to have in your toolbox. If you look closely at this one, I have a stack of different thread sizes, plus this one in here. Each one has a number. So <coughs> if I look at this one, these teeth line up perfectly with the thread. Now if I look at number, this is number 12, so that means I have 12 threads per inch. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to clean up our threads. So I just tighten this down and we'll just kind of gently work it back and forth. I'm just tightening this up as I go through the motion and we'll just clean up our threads, all right? So now we'll 
Go ahead and put them on the other side. All right, we're back again. So I tried using this um, thread chaser, but because we got this flat spot, this is where our uh, locking washer goes, I couldn't rotate all the way over. So we went to plan B and went back to Bruce and talked nicely to Bruce and we got what's called a thread chaser file. So I can see that 12 is 12 threads per inch, 18 threads per inch, etc., all the way around. And then we can also pop this end off, maybe, and we have another four on the other side. All right, Bruce has a whole set of these. It actually has two, so I have four, eight times two is 16 different threads. So you just drag your round in one direction. We clean them up. And now we can see that my adjusting nut spins on all the way as it should. All right, so let's go ahead and put our hub on. Another thing we need to do also it is, I'm going to take my bearing and I need to put a little bit of oil on here, all right? We never want to install a dry bearing or try and, so we'll just rotate that around so we get them lubed up. Okay, so I'll grab my hub. them on, grab our bearing. So this is our outer bearing. And then we'll put in our adjusting. So we can see just by using our Adjusting that, we can get our bearing in place. Now remember, we also have our seal on the inside, so that's going to create some resistance for us. We just want to rotate so our bearings get centered on our races. Okay, so now, if I follow the procedure in our industry procedure, I'm going to torque this down to 200 foot-pounds, which I've already got this torque wrench set to. I'm then going to back it off one full turn. I'm going to torque it down to 50 foot-pounds. Then I'll look at my chart, we'll do a final back off, and then we'll measure our end play. All right, so let's see how we do. So I make some resistance there. So we'll rotate our hub a little. There's 200 foot pounds right there. I still have really nice free movement of my hub. One other thing to remember, I told you guys not to do this. But I went ahead and did it anyway. When you rotate these hubs, grab it from the outside. If I rotate on the inside, and I don't get my hand out quick enough, that's a real good way to break your fingers and break the back of your hand, all right? Trust me, I, I've got my hand caught in the past, haven't broken anything, but it hurts. You break the back of your hand or your fingers, you're out of work, all right? So, rotates around quite nicely. I'm now gonna take my breaker bar, and we're going to back this off one full turn. Remember, we never use the torque wrench to back things off. Okay, so we'll back it off as a half a turn. I'm pretty loose, so if I look here, I can take another half a turn. Now, I'll torque it down to 50 foot-pounds. I've already got this one set to 50. We have our adapter on the end. Set him in place. Now 50 isn't a whole lot, so we're not gonna grab hold of this thing and reef on it. 
We're just going to take it real gentle. So typically I just hold my flat hand right like this and hear a click. There's 50 foot pounds right there. Still have nice even movement. So everything's centered. We'll take him off. And now I'm going to look at my worksheet and table. Number two is what's called the final back off. Now remember, we're working with a single axle nut. So this is a steer axle. I can either have 12 or 18 threads per inch. So if I take my thread pitch gauge, I already know this is 12. We've got 12 threads per inch. I put that right on there. Perfect fit. So I know that I have 12 threads per inch. So if I look at my table, I know I have to, my final back off is one sixth of a turn. So basically that's one flat, right? So this flat is going to end up over here. So we will take our breaker bar and socket and we're going to back them up. So I'm going to make this flat here go up to here. Right to about there. Another thing to remember too, guys, is that this axle nut did come with a locking mechanism on it. The locking mechanism actually sat around here. When we first got this trainer, I did not have the correct socket to release the locking mechanism, so we actually cut the locking mechanism off. So this is a single axle nut, so it's actually an adjusting nut and a lock nut in one nut, all right? So in the real world, you have a locking mechanism on, you would torque it down, you back it off, the lock sets, you're good to go, all right? So right now, we're gonna measure our end plate. All right, so I can probably set up on here. I might have to jockey this around just a little. And I'm going to get this dial indicator to we'll try and get it off right off the very end. Alright, so we have this conflagration figured out. So I'm going to measure the back and forward, or in and out, I guess, of our wheel hub. Okay? So I'm going to pull it out, and I'm going to go to zero, and I'm going to push it in. And right now I have about nine and a half thousandths of travel. Okay, so we're just going to tighten this up just a smidgen. Because as industry specs, we want to be between two thousandths and five thousandths of travel. So we'll pull them out again. You go to zero, push them in. And we're about four and a half. So we'll just tighten that up just a smidgen more. Pull them out, zero, oops, push in, and we're right just a little less than three thousandths, right where we need to be, okay? And as I said before, this single axle nut would have a lock on it, so this nut is not going anywhere. All right. Okay, so I'm now gonna put on the uh, brake drum. Okay, with our brake drum, we need to make sure that we're on, on our pads. So we have an outer pad, we have an inner lip. Looks like we are, so I'll just go ahead and we'll put on our lug nuts. We'll just cinch them down gently with our wrench. take a break and I'm going to fill up the air tank and then we'll check our travel of our slack adjuster. Okay, welcome back. So we have our 
brake drum on. So what we're going to do now is what we, we have referred to as the initial setup. I'm going to adjust the brake so the lining comes in contact with the drum. So when the lining's in contact, I can't do this. Then I'll back it off a half a turn, and then we'll take a measurement of the travel of our actuator. This is a Type 24. So a Type 24, uh, for an on-highway vehicle, we have one and three quarter inches max travel. So let's do our initial setup. So again, this is our adjusting pole. I can go on the bottom with my adjuster and adjust it without uh, relieving my pole. The only thing I'm going to do is wreck the pole on the inside of the slack adjuster. So, screwdriver goes in, you're going to twist that about a quarter of a turn, eighth of a turn, this pops out, and I'll go ahead and adjust up. Okay, so, didn't take a whole lot, can rotate the drum. So what I'll do now is I'll back this off one half of a turn. Oops, let me go the other way, don't I? So there's a half a turn, and I can see I have some movement. All right, so what we'll do now is Jason is going to record and hold. So again, we're looking for the, this travel right here. So if I look at this, my three is about halfway in the middle of this pin. So when I apply 60 PSI pressure, this should travel out to about four and three quarter inches. All right, you tell me when you're ready, Jason. Okay, there's 60 PSI of travel, or of application pressure. When you release, we'll do it one more time. 60 PSI, and release. All right, so you saw what the travel was. So in your service report, I want you to tell me if you're going to adjust or tighten or if we're good to go. All right, so you can figure out what that measurement was. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do now is on your worksheet, we need to check the resistance of our ABS sensor. So I've got a wire coming out to a wheel end, so I know that I do have a sensor on there, okay? So I have my little jumper cable right here. So we'll put him into our sensor. And if you sit there, we'll grab our multimeter, which we got from Bruce. So resistance, as you all should know, we are going to set up for ohms. So ohms is up at 12 o'clock. So I just rotate my dial to ohms of resistance. And we'll set this up here. So Jason can see that. That good for lighting right there, mm -hmm. Jason? Not too much backlight. Yeah, I'll actually hold it over okay. here. All right, so I put one end in. It doesn't matter which black or red, doesn't matter, long as we get a reading. And we're at, okay, so we're at 1.172. So, you know what the scale was, you know what the spec is, so in your service report, you need to tell me if that is within spec. And I think that is the end for uh, this lab objective. So I think now you have all the information you need. So let's get a lab objective sheet done and let's get a service report done and dump them in the Dropbox. Okay, thank you very much.